Very good morning students. So in uh, today's uh, session we are going to discuss some important tricks and tips in the last minute neat chemistry preparation. You can ask your doubts in between through chat. I will definitely respond to that. And uh, throughout the year you prepare for NEET or those who are preparing NEET from the 11th standard. I know very well you are clear with the concepts, but last minutes you can focus few things to boost your score. Yes? Okay. We started already. You can ask your doubts through chat. Fine. So last minute you can't rush to any of the new topics, right? But whatever you have studied already can be revised and few things you can remember when you solve the questions and everything especially formulas and examples okay so we are first going to start with the inorganic topics followed by organic and then physical chemistry so in inorganic chemistry first of all the chapters everything it is based on the periodic table you should know the elements present in s block p block Especially 3D series at least. And in lanthanoids, what are all the elements? Actinoids, what are all the elements present? Because sometimes simple questions can be asked like, which of the following is not the actinoid? Which of the following is not a lanthanoid like? So in such type of questions, if you know the element name, you can easily score 4 marks. Right? So now, we are going to uh, begin with S block. So in classification of elements, periodicity, properties, the trends are very, very important. You know what is ionization enthalpy, you know what is electron gain enthalpy, you know what is electronegativity, everything. But the trend is very important. Many students will get confused in terms of electronegativity as well as electron gain enthalpy. Uh, we can say uh, they may give you elements which is having more electron gain enthalpy. Sometimes instead of electron gain enthalpy, they can give you uh, which having more electron affinity. Electron gain enthalpy and electron affinity both are same. Right? So if we are telling this in terms of joule per mole, kilo joule per mole, amount of energy released during the addition of electron, that is electron affinity as well as electron gain enthalpy. 
So, if we take any particular period, the corresponding halogen will be having higher electron gain enthalpy. So, if we compare uh, within the halogen group, which will be having higher electron gain enthalpy, many of the students will commit this mistake. So, electron gain enthalpy is greater for chlorine. So, chlorine it is having more electron gain enthalpy. You know the reason? Because of the less repulsion. Many students will write fluorine for this one. But actually, electron negativity is greater for fluorine. Okay. So, and after that, electron, first electron gain enthalpy and second electron gain enthalpy. Another one question will be asked like, uh, why second electron gain enthalpy of oxygen is positive? Most of the case, second electron gain enthalpy will be positive. The reason, already we have added an electron, so repulsive force of interaction will be more. So, in order to overcome that, we have to apply energy to add electron. Right? So, such type of exceptional cases are very important. Apart from the regular trend, in competitive exams, meet exam, they will mainly focus on the exceptional cases. And then uh, the reactivity and then general trend, everything we have to learn. And then if we go blockwise, first we will begin with the S block. Okay. So in S block, what are the questions can be asked? What are the things you have to focus in the last minute? Apart from the compounds of uh, calcium, magnesium and then sodium. The general characteristics you should know. Yes? Yes, good afternoon, Karen. Okay. Apart from that, the trends, especially if we take a uh, density in the sense, as we move down the group, what happened to density? Usually it will increase. But the S-block element it is present in the left corner of the periodic table. So what about the size? Size will be increased, yes. So it will be having higher atomic radius. So if size increase, density definitely decrease. Okay. So here if we compare any element, any S block element, first group element in the corresponding period, it will be the largest. Don't consider the noble gas. Okay. So remaining groups, if we consider, first group element will be having uh, higher size, which means the larger is the radius. So, at that time, the density will be less. Usually, as we move down the group, density will increase, but here it is decreased. That you have to remember. So, first, density. Density trend you should remember. And then, hydration enthalpy. What is meant by hydration enthalpy? When the ion from the gaseous state, yes, so when the ion in the gaseous state, if you want to add it to water, water molecule will start surrounding to that. If it is a very small ion in this sense, more water molecule will surround, right? So if more water molecule surrounding the cation in this sense, it will be having higher hydration and calcium. So here, hydration enthalpy is applicable for ionic species, not for the neutral element. So which will be having a higher, in the sense, if we take group 1, lithium will be having higher hydration enthalpy. So like that, these trends, apart from the atomic radius, ionic radius, everything, we should know some other concepts. Hydration enthalpy. Hydration enthalpy not only here, uh, in D block also, while we calculate the E naught value, we we'll use hydration enthalpy. If it is more negative in the sense, more energy released during the hydration. So if it is a very small ion, hydration enthalpy will be more. So size and hydration enthalpy both are inversely proportional, right? So if it is very small cation, hydration enthalpy will be more. So it's greater for lithium. That's why it exists as a hydrated solid. Yes, it's, it's, it's coordinated with water molecule. It exists as a hydrated salt. 
We can't say for chlorinated water, hydrated salt will be hot because of its higher uh, hydration and color. And then what about for cesium? Cesium will be having lower hydration and clarity because of its height. Okay, it should be having higher electric conductivity. Lithium or cesium ions. In aqueous medium we are talking. So in aqueous medium, lithium plus will be surrounded by more water molecule. So at that time the size will be increased. Those no? so its conductivity will be increased. Yes. So this is about the trends. And then another important topic is color to flame. This the uh, S block elements exhibit color flame. When we show the salt of this S block elements in the non luminous flame, it exhibit color flame. What is the color exhibited? All the elements present in group one. You should remember the colors: lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. What are the colors? Lithium it is red, crimson red, sodium yellow, potassium violet, and then uh, rubidium reddish violet, cesium blue. So these colors you should know. What is the reason for this colored flame? Of course, the one electron present in the outermost shell it will undergo excitation. When it comes to the ground state, it will emit radiation in the visible region. Four hundred to seven fifty nanometer. Yes. So that it exhibit color flame. Yes, these are all the things we have to remember. And another one, the oxide formation. Here, if we take lithium, it mostly forms oxide. What we are telling, these are all um, how to revise organic chemistry in last minute. Definitely we will, after inorganic, we are going to uh, uh, discuss few important tricks in organic and how to revise it in Last minute. Okay. Once we completed these things, we will move to organic. Yes, Sarvesh. Right. Here, if we take lithium, sodium, potassium, they are all react with ammonia. So while it reacts with ammonia, what will be the color? Usually, when this group one element react with ammonia, it shows colored. Colored solution will be applied. What is the reason for the colored solution? It's because of the Ammoniated electron. This is very important a reaction given. So, ammoniated electron is responsible for the color solution. What is the color of the solution? It's a dark blue color solution. Yes. Group 2 elements similarly react with ammonia, it gives dark black color solution. So, the color of the solution is because of the ammoniated electron, it's like a free electron. So, it will absorb and emit light. The same criteria will be followed. And then when, when we talk about the oxides, lithium form oxides, sodium form super, uh, peroxides, potassium, rubidium, cesium, these are all form superoxide. Actually, it doesn't mean that potassium, rubidium, cesium, sodium, they can form only one type of oxide. They can form peroxide, superoxide all, but stable one. Sodium form stable peroxide. Potassium, rubidium, cesium for stable superoxide. Yes, example K2. Here it is in plus one, right? So oxygen will be minus half superoxide. Here, so like that, if we are if we are talking about the general properties, especially chemical reactions, each and every points in terms of inorganic, each and every point is very important. Line by line, you should know. Yes, last minute you can't, you can't read anything new, but I hope you have read this already. So you have to go through it again. Okay. And then density, one exceptional case will be there. Lithium and after that which will come, sodium, then potassium, rubidium, cesium like that. But here one exceptional, potassium is lighter than sodium. So like that, these exceptional points are very important. Okay, that will be asked. And in group two, what all the elements exhibit colored flame? Yes, apart from the uh, magnesium and beryllium, remaining all shows colored flame. Magnesium also sometimes it shows white color flame, but in NCRT it is given colorless. So we can follow that. 
Yeah. So group one and group two, the general properties, especially the tableau column is given. No? So you, you no need to remember the value in the tableau column. At least the trend, how it is increased, in between any drop is there, what is the reason? That's it. All the exceptional cases you should know. Here. And then when we talk about P block elements, six groups you are going to learn. All six groups are important because every year questions will be asked. Uh, if we consider any inorganic chapter from P block, major content is there. So questions, more number of questions will be asked. If we talk about 13th group, 14th group in the sense, uh, the inlet pair effect, it's a property of P block element. More than one stable oxidation state, it's due to the inlet pair effect. Group 13 elements, it exhibits plus 3 as well as plus 1. Plus 1, it is due to the inlet pair effect. So as a result, it exhibits two oxidation states. And lower oxidation state stability increases as we move down the group. Higher oxidation stability decreases as we move down the group. So boron can exhibit only plus 3. But the remaining element can exhibit plus 1 but stable will be plus 3. But for thallium plus 3 and thallium plus 1 which is more stable this is plus 1. As we move down the group the lower oxidation number stability increases. So the trends we should know. Clear. Yeah. And then when we uh, talk about the compounds of boron, how many maximum bonds possible in this is? Four bonds possible. BF3, 3, BF4 minus. So around boron, four bonds maximum. So covalency of boron is only four. But the remaining members can exhibit covalency greater than four. Yes? What may be the reason? It's one of the anomalous property. Because here there is no DR orbital available. Only 2S and 2P. 2S, 1 orbital, 2P, 3 orbital. Totally 4 orbitals are there. Only that 4 orbitals involved in bonding. So it can maximum show SP3 hybridization. So 4 sigma bonds possible. But the remaining elements, if I talk about aluminium. Aluminium can extend its uh, covalency till 6 AL at 6 3 minus. So here the covalency is 6 the covalency is 6 but here the covalency is only 4. It's due to the non-availability of the DR. So what we have to focus next all the groups 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, the anomalous property of the first element. Okay, so anomalous property points you have to go through. It's not only for P block as well as for S block and diagonal relationship. So these are, it may look very simple but statement type questions will be asked. Which of the following is correct, which is incorrect with that. So in that point of view, the statements are given. So you should read it and you have to understand the statement given. From that we have to choose which is correct, which is incorrect based on the question. So here you should be very careful. Even a single line is very important. Okay. And then more are important compounds, diborane. Diborane, the number of two center, two electron, three center, two electron bonds. And how many replaceable hydrogens, everything you have to go So whatever you have completed so far in your preparation, you have to go through it again. Last minute in the sense you can't do it from the top to bottom. At least you, you mark notes. These are all important, these are all exceptional. Especially exceptional cases you should know. Clear? Yes. You can ask, yes, you can ask your doubts in between. Okay, organic we will do. Ma'am, it's very huge how to complete it, how to, what are the important things, you just keep it in your mind. 
15th group nitrogen family so nitrogen family you should know mainly the phosphorus oxo acids oxo acids of phosphorus many times this question will be asked i uh, in which of the following compound p p bond will be there p o p bond will be there few acids will be given so from that you should choose which will be having peroxy linkage there which will be having phosphorus oxygen phosphorus bond it's not only for phosphorus it's also applicable for sulfur sulfur and phosphorus oxo acids structure okay and then nitrogen oxides one table column is given no so nitrogen is different type of oxides and what all the oxides are acidic neutral which is colored which exhibit in gaseous form which will be in the liquid form the physical states are very very important and they may give you from few sources which will not give no2 on heating for example pbno3 mgno3 lithium nitrate potassium nitrate so when we heat which will not produce no2 as a product listen here these three can produce no2 while they heat because they produce a corresponding oxide and no2 it cannot produce no2 so in the table column itself the preparation is also given so each table column we should focus uh, which of the oxide is blue color solid which is neutral which is gas which is liquid that kind of questions it it's common in the previous year also you can see such kind of question so which simply means that even a single table column matters right so nitrogen family oxygen family in oxygen family ozone the oxidation reaction and then sulfur dioxide reduction reaction what happened when we pass sulfur dioxide to KMnO4 it will be colorized because of its reducing property like that simple simple reactions are important and then nitrogen the dog brown ring test yes of course brown ring test so so many contents are there you have to do and 17th and 18th it's very simple it's not like uh, 14 16 so 17th and 18th what we have to focus more in this is 17th do the interhalogen compounds okay. interhalogen compounds they may ask for example brf3 what is its shape how many lone pairs on the central line so this topic when you study chemical bonding via cpr theory the same we can apply here number of lone pair bond pairs in br if7 what is the geometry and then when we do uh, is it possible which is not possible like that if they are giving i 3f is it possible no it is not possible what is the reason you know very well that the central atom should be larger than the bonded atom but here f is a central atom i is a bonded atom which is larger than chlorine so this kind of compound will not be formed okay so central atom should be larger than the bonded atom and when it is treated with water what are the products obtained for example x x dash is there the dash x dash is a bonded atom when it is treated with water what are the products we will get two acids aldo acids hx dash and we will get hox so these type of reactions are very very important the 17th and 18th group the reactions are limited okay so you can go through everything in 18th group the boiling point order which is having the lower boiling point helium what is the value why because of the weak van der waals force of attraction it's ex it is already elemental form boiling point it's less so these are all the points you should remember okay you should not skip p block no other option you should definitely learn it but in terms of these point of view if you learn definitely it will boost your score apart from reading simply yes 
and tell. DNF, if you are learning, if you are focusing, means immediately you focus coordination. Don't leave any time gap in between because both are interconnected. So DNF clock, if you are learning, you should know how to calculate the mm, yes. Okay, so you should know how to calculate the magnetic moment. What is the formula to calculate magnetic moment? What is the formula to calculate magnetic moment? Yes. It's root of N into N plus 2 Bohrmann. These are all the formulas very very important. Many students will do mistake N into N plus 1 in so of N into N plus 2. So these are all silly mistakes you can avoid. So, I can't teach everything in this session. Those are important topics where you will do mistake only we are discussing. And how to rectify it, how to boost your score. First thing, in such type of questions, number of uh, unpaired electron, if you know, we can easily find out the magnetic moment. Yes? Okay. So, if n is equal to 1, what is the value of u? If it is 2, what is the new value? If it is 1, it is fixed at 1.732. Yes, if it is 2, it is 2.82. If it is 3, new will be 3.8. So, it is fixed. So, till 5, you have to calculate and go to the exam part. You, can't, you don't have time to calculate inside that. So, if n is equal to 1, what is the value? n is equal to 2. Till 5, you should know. Suppose in the sum they are giving, the new is 4. Bohr magnetron. How many m can be there? Many students will come in mistake. It's 4. Actually, it is 3. So, if it is 3, it's near to 4. Right? New value is near to 4. This is calculated. But experimental value will be deviate from the calculated value. So, if it is 4, n will be 3. It is not 4. Clear? So, like that, the twisty part will be asked. And then the general characteristics of B block element, 13 characteristics are there. All 13 very very important. Interstitial compound formation, catalytic property and then uh, alloy formation, colored ion especially. Uh, the outermost configuration at least you should know. So outermost configuration if you know the ionic configuration we can write. If there is any unpaired electron is there it will be colored. If there is no unpaired electron will be colorless. So, which of the following ions are colored? Which of the following ions colored? Which of the following ions is not colored? Such kind of questions are common. And which is diamagnetic? Which is paramagnetic? So, these are all expected questions and many times it came. If you refer the previous year, you could find such type of questions. And entirety of atomization, it is lower for zinc. What is the reason? Yes. There is no unpaired electron, you know very well. Right? So these are all simple questions. If you know the basic electronic configuration, you can definitely do. Metallic bond, yes. Metallic bond strength increases if more unpaired electron is there. That's why zinc is very, very soft within the 3D series because of the absence of unpaired electrons. Yes. And then one thing you have to focus. After this D block, K1O4 and K2Cr2O7's properties. Yes. So K1O4, we know very well it's a good oxidizing agent. In redox also you learned about this. So K1O4, it can oxidize many substances. For example, it can oxidize sulfur dioxide into SO4. Oh my God. Sulfate. So how many moles it required? That's very important. Here, 2 moles for 5. So, the ratio is 2 is to 5 ratio. If instead of this, if H2O2 is there, 5 moles. If HI is there, 5 moles. So, 10 we can take. And if I minus is there, we have to take 10. So, like that, the ratios you have to remember. You can't remember the entire reaction, but the redox ratio is very important. They may ask you if you want to oxidize, 
one mole of waste for two, how many moles of KMnO4 required? So for five moles, two moles required. If I want one mole, how many moles required? We can do the cross multiplication. Two by five. Two by five moles required. So these are all very very common questions. We can definitely score. And apart from that, K2Cr2O7. When it is treated with the acid, what are the products we will get? If it is in the cold condition, what are the products? In the hot condition with concentrated sulfuric acid, what are the products of it? Yes. And then actinoids and lanthanoids, why the basicity decreases? And then why zirconium and hafnium having almost similar radius? These are all the consequences of lanthanoid contraction. So in that part, you have to focus on oxidation number. So what is the group oxidation number of lanthanides of, uh, and actinoids plus 3 plus 3? Apart from that, lanthanides can show plus 2 as well as plus 2. But actinoids can show till plus 7. Deuterium and neptunium can exhibit plus 7 oxidation state till that. So higher oxidation state possible. And then complex form and capacity also greater for actinoids than lanthanides. And they form colored ions, everything, the properties. And what is the composition of mist metal? Where we will use it? So these are all, it covers the entire chapter, right? So you should not neglect any part. You should cover the entire chapter. Yes? Okay. Hmm. In coordination, isomers. Uh, what are the types of isomer? If any one complex is given, you should know what are the possible uh, isomers, ampedendrate, decandus there, the linkage isomer possible and then ionization isomer in the sense interchanging of ligand outside the sphere, inside the sphere. Yes, of course the color change. So you, you, you should not skip the full chapter, you should focus few things inside that. You know the BBD, CFT. And in BPT, many students will commit this mistake. You should know strong field and weak field. Actually, strong field, weak field concept given in CFT. But while we solve using a BPT, we have to apply that. Then only we will get the correct one. Carbon-based ligands are strong. CO, CN, oxalato and everything. Yes. And ammonium, NH3, many times it will act as a weak field. But if it is in the presence of CO plus 3 as a central metal, it will act as a strong field. So at that time pairing will take place. And then if pairing happen, we call it as low spin complex. If pairing is not happening, high spin complex. What is a low spin configuration? High spin configuration. Yes, T2G, EG, the energy levels. When octahedral complex is forming, T2G will be lower energy than EG. And if it is for coordination, E and T2 will be there. Right? The G represents its generate the symmetry, symmetrical nature. Okay. How to revise organic chemistry in last minute? Okay. So if you are revising organic chemistry in last minute in the sense, first you just start with the reactions directly because the basics already you know, then only you can solve the reactions. So first you just focus on this simple type like electrophilic substitution in all functional groups. What are all meta directors? What are all ortho, ortho para directors? Okay. For example, if we take nitro as a meta director, aldehyde group is there, meta director. And remind OH, NH2, and if Cl is there, it will direct the incoming group towards ortho and para positions. And then in, in our mind, some exceptional cases there. Trying bromo, we will get. If we want to prepare mono bromo, what we have to do? First, it's treated with anhydride. So, each and every chapter, the electrophilic substitution. You can begin from the hydrocarbon. Benzene's electrophilic substitution. Second, chlorobenzene's electrophilic substitution. Phenol's electrophilic substitution. Anisole's electrophilic substitution. Next, aniline's electrophilic substitution. Finally, benzolidine. So, the electrophilic substitution part will be over. Next, you can focus on the nucleophilic substitution and addition in aldehyde ketone chapter. Their addition of HCN, alcohol, 
and the addition of sodium bisulfide and ammonia and its derivatives given. So while you study the ammonia and its derivatives, what you have to focus in this is the names when it is treated with hydroxylamine. What is the product obtained? Yes, it's oxide. When it is treated with ammonia, what is the product obtained? When it is treated with the hydrazine, we'll get hydrozone, phenyl hydrazine, phenyl hydrozone. So like that, product with the name. Because in glucose uh, structural elucidation also it's repeated. So few reactions will be repeated. And after this, first electrophilic substitution I said, next nucleophilic addition. Next you have to focus on the diazonium salt preparation with the properties. Diazonium salt, from the diazonium salt we can prepare n number of compounds. Second part of the amine chapter. So third you have to focus that. And then fourth one what you have to focus in the sense all the oxidation reactions. Starting from hydrocarbon chapter, oxidation in all the chapters and reduction in all the chapters. Still if you are going chapter wise means uh, it will be like after learning two to three chapters you will get tired. So if you are going like uh, oxidation separately, reduction separately in the sense it will help you to cover fully. Okay. Apart from the physical. Physical property you just keep it at the last. Okay. First whenever you are getting time you just revise and focus on the oxidation reduction fourth and fifth. Sixth one what you have to focus this is some naming reactions. Exchange reactions. If we take haloalkane haloorine some exchange, halogen exchange reactions given, Woods Pitti, Woods reaction, San Mayes reaction. San Mayes reaction already repeated in the Amin's chapter as well. So many reactions will be repeated. And hydrocarbon chapters, reactions you should not miss. These are all very simple. It may look very simple. Especially aromatization and then uh, cyclic polymerization to prepare the, uh, benzene. How to convert phenol to benzene, benzene to phenol like that. If you are covering reaction wise, oxidation fully, reduction fully, elimination fully, addition fully in the sense, you can cover all the organic chemistry together instead of the uh, chapters. So my advice is not to go chapter wise because chapter wise already you revise. So last minute if you are going chapter wise, you can find difficulty with the organic chemistry. So reaction wise you can do. It will definitely help you. Yes. So oxidizing agent. What are all the mild. What are all the uh, strong oxidizing agent. And then reducing agent types. Few reducing agents are specific. So what are those? Lithium aluminium hydride. We can use for cyanide to amine conversions. And then reduction of. Uh, Reduction of aldehydes, ketones and the oxidation of alcohols, both are reversible kind of reactions. And then you can focus on naming reaction I told you, no? sixth one. So in naming reactions, chapter wise, few reactions only given. It comes around 25 naming reactions. So all 25 you have. To. So it will, it will cover majority of the organic. So seventh what you have to focus differentiation test for different functional group. If two compounds given which is a suitable test to differentiate the compound, to distinguish the compound, this is tolerance, the fillings, iodoformics for aldehydes, ketones, methyl keto group is there. So it's specific. And then if alcohol is given to different alcohol, if you want to identify which is primary, secondary, this is we can go with the Lucas test. And then Phenol is given, carboxylic acid is given, in the sense we can use neutral ferric chloride, sodium hydrogen carbonate, like that. So, amines chapter means for reagent, nitrous acid test, carbyl amine test. So, this kind of differentiation tests are very, very important. This is 7. So, it will cover almost 70 percentage of the organic chemistry. And 10 percentage, it's IUPAC name. Because a uh, word problem will be there, compound A having the molecular formula like that. So at that time it will not be given as a compound. Instead of that, in wordings they will give. 
So compound name is given, you should know the structure. Then only we can find out the answer. So IUPAC name. Next eight, you have to focus on IUPAC name. And nine, all the physical properties. If you are taking boiling point, in all the chapters, boiling point trend. Yes, boiling point and halogen, halogen, phenols, alcohols, most of the case it's based on hydrogen bonding concepts. And then after the boiling point, then the acidity and basicity order. Okay. So if you cover these things, entire organic is over. Instead of going, uh, what is that, chapter wise, if you are going a reaction wise, what, what are the order I said? First, all the electrophilic substitution. Next, nucleophilic addition reaction. And then what is third I said? Yes, diazonium salt based reaction. Fourth, oxidation. Fifth, reduction. And then sixth, what I said? Important naming reaction. And seven, all the distinguished tests you should focus. Yes, and eight, IUPAC name. Ninth, boiling point, density order. Tenth, acidity and basicity. If you follow in this sequence, you can definitely, easily, quickly revise organic chemistry in last month. Instead of chapter wise. So it will cover 100% fully, full organic chemistry. If you are sure about that, if you, know, if you study individual chapters already, you just follow this method. Okay. So, 10 parts you are dividing, you know, so you can definitely complete. Yes. Any other doubt you can ask? Okay, what about the general topics? Yes, general topics are very simple. You can easily score 16 marks in that. Biomolecules, polymers, everyday life and then environmental. Each chapter one one question will be asked. So if you are writing all four, you can score 16 marks easily. Yes. So don't uh, skip those chapters. Okay. Fine. So in physical chemistry, what we have to do in this sense? First thing, formulas. First formulas, you should know. Form, with, with only formula, we can't solve anything. So, formulas followed by in each formula, you try two to three numerical. Last minute, you can't do everything. So, in each formula, you try two to three numericals. If you are doing it for the first time, means at least two to three by this time. Okay, uh, not more than that. And in solid state, there is no big numericals, especially number of atom calculation. And then they will ask you formula calculation and then density calculation. Density calculation, formula calculation, only these two. And apart from the theory part, a large portion is there. Examples, defects, magnetic property, electrical property, examples are very, very important. Yes. So the solid state, surface chemistry, these are all example based subjects. For each type, examples are important. So these chapter consists many examples. So examples of colloids, different type of colloids, their examples. Okay, fine. So in so solution chapter, first thing you should clear with that molarity, molarity, then only we can do solution. In solution, all the four colligative property. The formula and then in each qualitative property one or two theoretical questions is possible. Especially ebullioscopic constant, cryoscopic constant and then in uh, osmotic pressure, isotonic, 
hypertonic, hypotonic. If we place a blood cell in 0.9% NaCl, what happens? If it is goes above the configuration, below the configuration, when it will be behave as hypertonic, hypotonic, these are all the things you have to focus. And then Henry's law, Rawlings law based theories. Positive, negative deviation examples. So example is very important in positive and negative deviation because we can use it in the azeotrope part as well. Minimum boiling, maximum boiling azeotrope. Maximum boiling azeotropes are negative deviation liquids. Minimum boiling azeotropes show positive deviation from Rawls law. So if you are learning positive deviation examples there, we can apply it here as well. Yes. And in electrochemistry, the electrochemical cell uh, construction part and then uh, molar conductivity, coal rush law. So don't skip anything. You have to focus these things. Yes. Any doubt? See, remaining topics are all like uh, uh, simple topic. Why I focused on few topics since there only students will find difficulty and weightage wise. These chapters are important but they find difficulty because of the content. It's a huge content. Organic is huge. But actually it's huge. But if you divide it in a such a way, what I told, it will be easy for you. Yes. So now we are not going to learn anything new because already you learned everything. So in the last minute you are going to revise it. That's very important. Okay. So revising concepts will boost your score. Once you learn one chapter but we can't assure that the same you can uh, remember it in the, inside the exam hall. So before going to the exam hall, whatever so far you learn, you just revise and you can easily score mark, you can confidently attend the question. Okay? So you are not going to do anything newly. So already you studied well. So you, you, you already completed everything. So you don't need to worry about that. You just revise the concepts, whatever, whatever we discussed. What are all the important points? Just do it again. It will definitely boost your score. It will definitely boost your confidence while you uh, read the question paper. Yes, thank you. So, wishing you very, uh, like, you you know everything. You just keep it in your mind that chemistry is easy. You know everything. You studied everything. You are not going to do anything new. Okay. So, concepts, everything you know very well. One thing inside the examination hall, while you read it, you just concentrate more on the question. Then only within one time reading, you can understand the question, you can answer. You no need to read it again and again. Okay? So you can easily attend 45 questions out of 50 questions. So for whatever we discuss, if you thorough with these things, definitely you can attend 30 to 35 questions. Remaining under all like uh, topics like uh, thermodynamics and equilibrium, all things. So in the numerical chapter also the theory part is important. We can't say every time they will ask you only numerical from those chapters. Theory chapters, uh, what we are thinking, thermodynamics, they will ask only uh, numerical. They will ask numerical. Apart from that, theory topics like intensive property, extensive property, path function, these are all simple concepts. But sometimes questions will be asked like which of the following is not extensive, which is not intensive like that. So, such simple questions you no need to avoid. You just go through it, go through the part. Okay? From the basics you go through. Because you learn from the basic only. So, you just go through from the beginning. And don't waste a single minute. Okay? You don't have time. So, don't waste a single minute. You just like that, you just turn the page and revise. Yes? Okay. Any doubts or anything you want to share, you can do.
five. Yes, all the very best for your exam. Definitely you'll score better. Okay. So be confident while you attend the answers. And be careful while you share the OMR sheet. Yes. Okay. Thank you students.